Um, so unexpectedly, not unexpectedly, I should have said expectedly, vectors come back into mechanics. Vectors are just always going to be used in mechanics because we know that vectors are to do with directions and things having a direction. And in mechanics, in real life, things are often associated with a direction that they are moving in. So it says that forces have direction and therefore we can naturally write them as vectors either in ij notation or as column vectors. I prefer column vectors. You should prefer column vectors. They are the better way of doing your calculations. And it says here you can find the resultant of two or more forces given as vectors by adding the vectors. Now we know that because if you have a vector that was a and a vector that was b, if you wanted to find the resultant of those two vectors, we know from pure maths that you just add those two things together. But isn't that a bit strange? Because we've just said here, to find the resultant of some forces, we are adding the vectors. Because I think on this previous page that we had here, when we were finding the resultant force, I don't know, maybe in this up and down direction, I didn't do 8 plus 4, did I? Why, why is it then with vectors that I'm adding them, but here I was actually doing a subtracting? Yeah? Because this has a direction already. What you're actually doing here is you're actually doing 8 plus negative 4. That's what you're actually doing. You're already taking into account the direction by doing the subtracting. With the vectors, they already have the directions given to them. In this one, we're actually giving them directions. Look, we've got 3 and 1, which we've said are positive. This one is going in the opposite direction, so we've said it's negative 3. So we actually have been doing this already. With vectors, we add them together. With these ones, our brains tend to just see it as, oh, we do those ones, take away those ones, or those ones, take away those ones. But it's the same idea as adding the things together. The vectors have already, though, told us if they are positives or negatives. They've already told us about the directions that we've got. So I'm going to do two examples here. Um, we can find the resultant of the force um, for these things. Uh, sorry, let me just start again. We can find the resultant of these forces by adding the vectors together. So we've got the forces 2i plus 3j, which is 2, 3. I'm going to call that F1. I've got another force, F2, which is 4i minus j. And I've got another, another force, F3, which is minus 3, 2. Oh, and I've got another force, which is A, B they act on an object which is in equilibrium. If it's in equilibrium, what do you know about the resultant force? It's zero, good. So because it's in equilibrium, the resultant force when you add them together is zero. So when I add two, three, plus 4 minus 1, plus minus 3, 2, plus a, b, I get 0. So they have to add up to 0 because there is no resultant force. It's completely balanced. What do we do next to solve this problem to find a and b? How do we find a then? Red one, any ideas? How would we find out what A is? And make it equal zero. Yeah, so the A, the top part, you've got 2 plus 4 minus 3 plus A must be equal to zero. 2 plus 4 minus 3 plus A must be equal to zero. So what's that? 6 minus 3, that's 3 plus A equals zero. So A must be equal to minus 3. And then from the other bit, we've got 3 minus 1 plus 2 plus B is equal to zero. So that's 2 plus 3, that's 4 plus b is equal to 0. So b is equal to minus 4. If that's what the force was, they would all completely cancel each other out. 
Now, I'm going to just draw something over here, but it's not to do with this question. So the, there are four forces. I'm not going to draw them accurately, but you've got one of the forces, another force, another force, and another force. That's maybe F1, F2, F3, F4. That was F1, F2, F3, F4. If it goes back to where it started, the resultant is zero. There is no overall resultant. So these four vectors that we've got here, if you were to draw them and connect them together like that, they would go back to where they started because there is no overall resultant vector to that one. This question is now going to be telling us a bit more about the directions. It says the vector i is due east. So we're saying that i is going east. Well, that's good. And the vector j is due north. That's also good because that's the usual direction that we would draw them. A particle begins at rest at the origin. It is acted on by three forces that we've got here, here, and here. And we're going to try and find out the resultant force by adding them together. So the first thing that we're going to do the resultant force will be 2, 1, which is this one, plus 3, minus 2, plus minus 1, 4. So we're just adding together, because we don't need to worry about doing subtracting like we did before, because the vectors have already got the directions taken into account for us. So we've got 2 plus 3 is 5, minus 1 is 4. 1 plus 4 minus 2 is 3. So the resultant force is 4, 3 newtons by adding those three forces together. This one's not in equilibrium because there is a resultant force. So if I was going to draw that force, well, we know it's going 4 across and it's going 3 up. So overall, the overall resultant force would be the magnitude of that, which is 3 squared plus 4 squared, which is 5. It then wants us to work out the bearing of the resultant force. This was the magnitude of the resultant force, OK? So it's 5 newtons. The bearing, if you remember from GCSE, is the angle. Now, we're always doing it from where it starts, and there's the force. We want to know what this angle here is. That's the angle that's up here. Or find this angle and do 90 minus to get the theta. Okay? But you can find it straight away by doing that because they're alternate angles. So we know that tan theta is equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent. So theta is the inverse tan of 4 over 3, which is, I don't know, Thank you, Sean. Fifty-three point one degrees. But as a bearing, we need to give it. I don't know if you remember this. It has to have three numbers, so it would be zero, five, three degrees. You put a zero at the beginning because there needs to be three numbers. It's measured clockwise. It has three digits, and it's measured from north. So two ideas. One idea, sorry, of just adding the forces together. This one, they equal zero, because it said equilibrium. This one, we came up with a resultant force. We could have drawn that resultant force like we did earlier on, where we said, I don't know, there's a force of four to the right and 3 up, we know that overall it's going to be going in that direction. Pythagoras and Sokotoa is what we just did for that bit. So it's a repeat of some of those things from earlier on. Can I go on to the bottom questions and then it's practice time, yeah? So this one is definitely worth listening to. This is probably like pushing it to a bit more of a, an a level -y st t style of question. It says that a particle is acted upon by two forces, F1 and F2, and it says that P is a positive constant. First of all, find the angle between F2 and J. OK, well, let's have a look at F2 for a second. F2 is P to P. 
So I'm going to start off with my little point to begin with, and I'm going to draw P across and 2P going upwards. And it wants us to find out, that's the force there. I think my board's gone funny again. That's the direction of the force. It wants me to find the direction, sorry, the angle between F2 and J. Well, J, if I draw it from here, is this force. So it's just looking for this angle, the angle between J and the force, which is going to be the same as this angle here. Let's call that one theta. This thing really badly behaved. How can I find theta? Yep, inverse tan of P over 2P, the opposite over the adjacent. Now, luckily, it doesn't matter that P was there because they're going to cancel. So we get the inverse tan of, when the P's cancel out, the inverse tan of a half. which is 26.6 degrees. We've done these before when we did vectors, do you remember? So it was the angle between J and the force. We started drawing them from the same point. You have to draw them from the same point to find the angle. Now this is where it gets a bit more interesting, okay? Part B of the question says, this is the most important bit before we do this exercise to listen really carefully to. The resultant of F1 and F2 is R, given that R is parallel to I. Find the value of P. OK. Well, first of all, let's deal with the sentence that I underline with the straight lines. The resultant of F1 and F2 is R. So in other words, R is equal to F1 plus F2. We can just add the forces together. I'm going to deal with this bit in just a second, OK? So that must mean that R is equal to 1 minus 3, because that's F1. And then F2 is P, 2P. So when I add them together, I get 1 plus P and minus 3 plus 2P. <coughs> now the squiggly bit that I've written, that R is parallel to I, how do we show if two vectors are parallel to each other? Yes, there's a scale factor. So we know because R is parallel to I, we know that R must be some scale factor of, what's the I vector in, ve in column form? One, zero. So we know that R <coughs> must be 1, 0 multiplied by k, because it's some multiple. We don't, it's not exactly equal to i, but it's some multiple of it. And that's what I've put inside this blue box here. If a vector is parallel to, say, 1, 2, then it could be any multiple of it. It could have been k, 2k. So I know that this thing here, which is r, is also a multiple of 1, 0. So I can put that together and I can say k0, because this is obviously just k0. k0 is equal to 1 plus p minus 3 plus 2p. Which is the best bit to look at, the i component or the j component? The j component. OK, good. The j component is better because it's equal to 0. So you get 0 equals minus 3 plus 2p. So you get that P is equal to 3 over 2. Now I'm just going to really quickly change the question because I do want to do 10 minutes of practice. Imagine that it said that R was parallel to I plus 2J then instead, I would have had 
that R, which we've just worked out, was parallel to I plus 2J. So you would have had K 2K equals 1 plus P minus 3 plus 2P. Simultaneous equations, OK? You would see from the numerator, not the numerator, what am I talking about? You would see from the I part that 1 plus P is equal to K and that minus 3 plus 2P is equal to 2K and you can substitute and solve to find out what p is equal to. So this is if I made it up and I changed the question, if it was parallel to 1 plus 2j, you're going to have some simultaneous equations that goes with this, OK? You are going to try, uh, do I want to do this one here? No, we won't do this question. We'll do this to start with. We're going to start doing some questions from exercise 10b, and I'll tell you which ones we're going to do.